what is Yahoo now? Yahoo is a great company that has terrific people and products that really appeal to a lot of consumers. Um, and what we're really very focused on is inspiring and delighting users amidst their daily habits. Email, search, finance, news, games, Flickr. These are all things that people do every day. And Yahoo is a brand that touches a lot of people every day. And our goal is to make those daily habits inspiring and delightful, very easy to use, and, and really practical. And I think that there's just an amazing, uh, an amazing set of opportunities. What would you like to see Yahoo be two years from now that it is not now? Um, well, I mean, I think that you know we're, we're getting to work on all of these on all of these issues. One of the things that I think is really important is that I want Yahoo to be the absolute best place to work, right? You know, I want it to have a fantastic culture, um, and there's terrific people there, and there is a terrific culture there, and we're basically working really hard right now to remind people, <laughs> right, remind them about all the opportunities that are that are there, and just solving some of the obvious problems. You know, I have a lot of my colleagues here. Um, from Yahoo today, but a lot of it is just really helping, you know, in, in a company, the interesting thing is, you know, Yahoo is, is the grandfather of a lot of internet companies. It's been around for a long time, and with a large company that's been around for a long time, bureaucracy creeps in, and it's really important to, to every now and then say, wait, like, why do we have turnstiles? <laughs> like, why are we all carrying Blackberries, right? Like, and, and, you know, and just start helping, <laughs> like, start helping to say, okay, like, what's going to be important in terms of giving people the insight, the environment that they need to really excel and succeed? So this cultural transformation that you're doing, something happened, something is happening this week in that regard. What is that? Oh, so we, um, we, we literally are moving the company from Blackberries to smartphones. I think that one of the really important things for Yahoo's strategy moving forward is mobile, right? We have, we have a terrific set of assets on the web. They are all the things that people want to do on their mobile phones. And so it was really important that our engineers, our salespeople, everyone throughout the whole organization really understand Android, iPhones, right, and, and you know, Windows 8, really get a sense of what's happening there and how to participate and then how to create an amazing experience. You want the engineers to feel it. You want the salespeople to say, hey, you know, I saw this great thing on this app. You, we should do this on our app, right, and, and giving them a lot of feedback. And so we, we decided that we needed to get, get everyone upgraded to smartphones a, as a work tool. And, um, and we announced this back in September. There's been a lot of fanfare about it. People have been very excited. Uh, we had everyone place their orders for the phones they wanted. And this week, we've actually been helping everyone transfer their data, their contacts, their email from their Blackberries to their smartphones. We've had stations set up all across campus. Uh, they've had balloons and banners just to make it fun. Um, and so, you know, we've been, we've been doing that. But it's, been, it's been, a been a very fun, spirited time at Yahoo. So people have a choice. No Blackberries, but people have a choice of iPhones, Androids. Um, and Windows 8. And Windows 8. Which one <laughs> in terms of choice? Well, I think the fact that iPhone 5 came out right at the time, and that's the version of the iPhone that we're offering, gave it a bit of a boost. But iPhone was actually the most popular. Yeah. <laughs> so, Marissa, um, the board brought you in for many reasons. But a very, very important reason is that you, you are a product person. And you spent your career at Google, and you were a a top product person there. And Yahoo needs to develop great products to attract more users, to compete better against, uh, with, against Google and Facebook. What is a great product to you? Um, I mean, I think a great product is something where you see an acute user need, and you solve it in a way that is frictionless and, and beautiful, right? You really will hope that there's an element of personality and delight there. Um, and, but I do think it's you know, identifying the need and then finding out a, finding a, an easy way to solve it. Sometimes you solve it straight and head on, right? You need to send emails, but you have an, you know, you have an easy way of doing emails. Sometimes you, you know, solve it in an interesting way, right? You help people who really love photography 
share their pictures better, which is you know, really where Flickr got its hold. And it was, a, it was an entirely new idea. So sometimes it's about innovation. Sometimes it's about coming at the problem very much head on. But it's about really having an eye for design and an eye for the user need. How to not get in the user's way. Right? How can you just help someone immediately get something done, especially if they're doing something every day, multiple times per day. You really want it to be something that is easy and fast and simple with nothing in the way. So what's a great product? Name a great product mm, I mean, that you would, love to, you would love to own. I'm not talking I mean, about, uh, I mean, I'll <laughs> ask you about acquisitions, but what's a, what's a great product that you envy? <laughs> I mean... I think it's, it's so hard to me because I always, it's funny because like a lot of times one of the questions I like to ask candidates is what's the coolest thing you've seen in the past six months? And like I just think that, you know, there's so many things to be inspired by all the time. I mean, so, you know, great products. I think the iPhone is a great product. You know, I'm biased, but I think, you know, Google having been part of this for a long, long is a great product. But I also think, you know, there's a, there's a terrific uh, paper making company in Germany called Gemund. <laughs> fourth generation paper maker and they just keep reinventing themselves and now they actually specialize on on luxury papers. It turns out Godiva Gold is theirs. Like the only people who print Godiva Gold is Gamund. And you know, you meet those people and they, they just are doing fantastically innovative things. They make, you know, paper that looks like velvet. And you know, they're trying all these different things. And so there's there's terrific products all around. But it's that it's that flair. It's that flair for, hey, can we do that? Right? And you know, how, if we were going to try and do that, how could we? I just think that, you know, for me, I find creativity really inspiring. And I think that that's the type of thing, when you see that, that notion in a product uh, where you're just like, wow, like this helps me do something I didn't think I could do, or helps me do something I didn't think I could do this easily. Mm -hmm. That's the, the mark of a great consumer product. And you have some great products that probably need new fuel, new energy, new innovation, like Flickr. And so that could be a great product that is kind of lying dormant and you need to bring some innovation to. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that one of the key pieces for Yahoo is getting really focused on the things that it's great at and, and has historically been great at and investing an appropriate amount, being really clear about execution, right? And not, I mean, we've had a couple of really core pillar products and then we have a lot of other products that are smaller that have occasionally been a hit or a hit in one market, but I do think we really want to have a global suite of products that are truly excellent. And these are things like search, mail, the homepage, news, finance, sports. I mean, Yahoo Sports is, has been just an entirely eye-awakening experience for me, right, in terms of how much people use it, how popular it is, um, you know, the amount of time people spend on fantasy football and how compelling it is as a product. <laughs> like, we you know we had, I mean, we had a fantasy football outage on a Sunday a couple of weeks ago, and, you know, it was... You know, that was, I've, I've experienced, you know, for all my time in the internet, I've experienced a lot of outages, a lot of like, like, I mean, a Sunday outage of fantasy football for like multiple hours in the middle of the season was like, you know, it was, it was, a, you know, Twitter was a little brutal that day. My husband actually happened to be at the 49ers game. That was brutal too <laughs> with his friends who couldn't make their, their trades and their draft picks. Um, but, you know, so I mean, I do think there's all kinds of things like that. There's Flickr, there's groups, there's answers. You know, there's just a huge amount of user participation. There's a huge amount of information need being filled across these products. And there's a great opportunity to move to mobile. As we started to look at the strategy this year, one of the interesting things we did is we had, some, we had uh, my chief of staff poll what people do on their phones in rank-ordered lists. What do they do each day? And we took off the things on the top that were done by the carriers voice and text. And we also took off maps because I've done, I've done maps in my former life and it's very expensive, very hard to do well. <laughs> Apple's finding that out. <laughs> um, <laughs> so like we're not going to do maps, right? <laughs> like, um, and so, you know, we did all of these, these things. And the interesting thing is when you look at what people want to do on their phone, you can read it from top to bottom. It's, you know, um, mail, weather, check stock quotes, check sports scores, watch videos, share photos, check the news. Literally, I've done the exercise a couple of times where I've asked people to close their eyes, and of course they're a little bit biased because they know that I'm at Yahoo. And I'll read the list and they'll be like, well, you're just describing Yahoo's business. Hmm. And actually I'm like, no, what I'm reading is an unfiltered, unedited list of what people want to do on their phones. Right? This is a huge opportunity 
for Yahoo. Really? Because we have the content, we have all of the information that people want on their phones, and now it's about making it easy and relevant to use on mobile. And yet, and so mobile is the linchpin of Yahoo's turnaround. Is that, is that a fair statement? I think that there's a couple of key pieces. I think that getting focused on the things that people do every day. You know, there's sort of like, what do you do first when you wake up? You know, and so to me, there's sort of four big pieces of that. There's some people do a search, some people do their email, some people go to a selected homepage on the web, some people grab their phone, right? So those are sort of four big, big pieces. There's the verticals that we've always been really strong in, that we just need better execution, innovation to, to really work with. Um, there's you know, a real opportunity for us to partner. Um, you know, one of our employees got up at our, our Friday afternoon meetings and asked me, you know, we, d we don't have a mobile OS, we don't have mobile hardware, we don't have a browser, we don't have a social network. How are we going to compete? <laughs> and I said, well, we don't have a mobile OS, we don't have mobile hardware, we don't have a social network, and we don't have a browser, which means that we can partner with the best people mm -hmm. in those areas in order to get the distribution that we need. And, you know, Yahoo in many ways is has a really great opportunity to partner with all, of, uh, with all of these compelling brands and compelling products and offerings, which I think yeah. is, is really important. And then there is the mobile piece. Plus, there's the talent piece, because I really do think companies, and in particular tech companies, really succeed or fail based on the people. Their ability to attract people, keep the right people in the right roles, focused on the right things. And you know, I really do think making Yahoo the absolute best place to work, finding the right people, and I will say I think we've done a tremendous job um, on, in particular, our management team over the past couple of, of, uh, of months. I, you know, last week was Thanksgiving. I got to sit down and say, what was I thankful for? And I have so much to be thankful for, because I was like, I'm thankful for my new baby. I'm thankful for my new job. I'm thankful for my husband and my terrific family. And I'm thankful for all of the unbelievably amazing people who have showed up to help me over the past few months. Right? Everything. We have Kathy Savitt here, who we met at the Most Powerful Women's Summit. And you know, as a, our CMO, I can't think of a better CMO. We have Jackie Reese is here, who is our head of people and development. We have a tremendous head of HR, who has also bought and sold $12 billion worth of media companies and can also run the entire M&A function of the company, right? And we've had like, Deal maker you know, plus, <laughs> I call Jackie and the story about you. You know, we've had a, you know, we've had a terrific CFO. Ken Golden has come. He's been a public company CFO for 25 years. You know, has brought legendary companies like At Home, Siebel, Sybase, Public, and played a huge role in Silicon Valley. And we're lucky enough to have him, have him there. Uh, you know, and you know, we have Henrique now to, to lead the sales force and the, and the media efforts. It's been great. And there's been terrific people there. Um, you know, we have a tremendous general counsel, Ron Bell, uh, who's been at Yahoo for 13 years and knows, and knows everything and is terrific. And, and you brought him up to general counsel, and we, right? And we promoted him from within, and he's been just great. And uh, because of our focus on mobile, one of the things we wanted to do is have a division that was very focused on mobile. So we created a new area, which is emerging technologies and products. Uh, and we promoted Adam Cahan from inside the organization to lead that. He's the founder of a little company called Intonow, which uh, Yahoo bought uh, about two years ago and is a second screen experience. But Adam is just tremendous in terms of thinking about Sort tablets, of social TV mobile, watching, right? And, and, he's, and he's just got a great product mind. And so, you know, we've been, I've been, I'm really, really thankful for all the people who showed up to help, um, as well as, you know, we have Trish here, my amazing, my amazing assistant. And, and Patricia and Moulfries Patricia from, from And Google. Anne Yamamoto, who's running Yahoo PR. Like, I just, I, I'm so, I've been just so lucky and so blessed to have okay. so many tremendous people show up. It's beginning to sound like an Oscars acceptance speech. Um, um, on mobile, one more question. What you don't have, what mobile, what, what Yahoo does. It's, I wanted to ask you the question. If we went 100% mobile tomorrow, would, you, would Yahoo be better off than it is today? Well, right now we have to, we have to build the team. Uh, we right. Have to, but I mean, if, if it were a 100% mobile, mobile world tomorrow... Would Yahoo be a better off company or a worse off company? It's a hard question. Um, I, yeah. I, think it, I think it's hard to say. Um, I do think it would, it would cause us to get very focused on it very quickly. <laughs> it would. Um, but you don't have travel. But you I don't, don't have e-commerce. Um, you don't have payment but I do, systems. But I do think that, that you know, right now the strength of what we've meant to people on the desktop 
the fact that we are so many users' homepages and many people use us for email is an opportunity for us to introduce these products. So as they switch to the phone, they say, oh, yes, my mail is there, and my mail is Yahoo. What else does Yahoo have for me? Yeah. And I do think that there's a great opportunity right now that's very greenfield in terms of someone buys a new phone or this week at Yahoo gets their new phone. What's the first app they should install? I don't know. What? Right, and the point is it's different for every person, and yeah. it's a, a total, is a total you know, grab bag right now. And I do think over time, there will be the, the apps that are on the phone and are bundled and, then they're, and, and are default, and we're lucky enough to be some of those uh, in the case of you know, Apple for stocks and weather. But I do think that there's a great opportunity to be that application. And it may be that it actually ends, ends up not being one application. It may end up being a couple of applications. It may be fantasy football for some. It may be mail or you know, our mail application or our news or news for some. But I do think there's a great opportunity to say, oh my gosh, you just got a new phone. You have to get Yahoo Fantasy Sports. Or you have to go and get, you have to go and get Flickr. How are you thinking about acquisitions? Um, I think there's a couple of different types of acquisitions that we're looking at, um, and you know, this is really this is really Jackie's area. But I do think that one of the opportunities is, that we have to to seize is we need to grow our mobile expertise really quickly. And one of the things we came to conc we concluded is yes, we need to hire one by one. But wouldn't it also be great if we got slugs of people right, that were already a team and already knew how to work together. And you know, of course, in Silicon Valley, this is called aqua hiring, mm -hmm. where you basically say, OK, great. Your startup idea didn't work out. <laughs> like, but you still are a tremendous set of talent, and you know how to work together as a team. Please stop working on your product. Come over here and work on our product. And so we've been looking at aqua hires. We've done our first one. Um, it's a company in New York called Stamped. Um, and we picked up a terrific set of talent there. They're excited to they were They said, you know, look, we had an idea. It didn't play out to be as big as we thought it would. But we're excited to keep working together. And we're excited to come over here and work on something impactful. And that was great. And then there also will be some opportunities for bigger, more strategic acquisitions that align, in particular with things like some of our ad technology, some of the real revenue engines of the company. You said on the earnings call that you were looking at acquisitions in the tens to hundreds of millions. Does that mean that you really do not want to do an acquisition that is over a billion dollars? Um, I mean, I really haven't thought of it that way. I do think that... You know, there's the there's the aqua hire phase, which you know is is usually on the very low end of that. Um, and you know, there, you know, it's it's clear that that's a great that's a great buy and a great asset for for Yahoo. I think that one of the things you see with startups is they hit an inflection point. And that inflection point, for whatever reason, is usually around a hundred million dollars. Right, because that's the point where they have a hit runaway consumer product. They're getting lots of users, lots of usage, and that's the moment when they've got to decide, like, go big or go home. <laughs> right, like go bigger or go bigger get sold. Does that make sense? Because at that moment they've got to decide. Okay, you know we've got to wrap up a sales force. We've got to wrap up our finance functions. And the thing is, once they start getting much bigger than that, if you buy them, you have all this duplication. You have all these integration issues, right? You have all of these you know, business plans and areas that where you really got to figure out what should happen with them strategically. And so for a lot of companies, it's that Series C round where they're going to decide, you know, are we going to go for it? Are we going to ramp up our own revenue generation engine and go for the IPO? Or do we want to stay more focused on the product, on our users, not ramp up all of that, and, or, and find a home at a company that already has all of those different elements in place where we can leverage their sales force, we can leverage their finance, their, their recruiting engines, things like that. And that's, that's why I, I made that comment. It really isn't about a particular dollar value where it stops, but it's just that there is kind of that sweet spot in terms of maturity of a company and how easy it is to integrate and really get the value from it. And companies that could mit, hit 100 million users and 100 million in revenues, right? And you call it the rule of 100 million. Yeah, the nine-figure rule. The nine-figure the nine <laughs> rule. Which is true, I think, for both companies outside as well as, as, well as opportunities inside. You know, I really think that one of the things that you know, ya ya you know, Yahoo gets to think big. And you know, if we're rolling out new products, new features, we should be thinking about things. What are features that are going to help 100 million people? What are features that are going to make $100 million? I mean, you know, Yahoo makes $5 billion, $100 million. If we, if we come up with a new product that makes $100 million, that's 2% of our revenue, right? So I mean, so even, I mean, it's a big number and it's hard to think of ideas that are going to make $100 million, but the truth is that's the standard we have to hold ourselves to in order to move the needle. Yahoo has 12,000 employees. 
a year from now, will it have more or fewer than 12,000 employees? Uh, I mean, I think it's hard to speculate on that. I think that, you know, there's just, there's terrific people there. And, you know, I've been really, really, I mean, the job is just fun. I'm having a blast, right? Um, and I think that the big thing here is to get people focused on execution and focused on results and performance. Like, there's simple things. Like, for example, um, in some of our performance evaluations, performance evaluations at Yahoo used to be done once a year. Now we're doing them once a quarter, mm -hmm. right? They used to be, and, and, and no offense to this, but they're, 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 the old system had performance and potential. No offense to potential. What we care about now is performance, <laughs> OK? <laughs> like, you know, great. Like, we, we hope you have potential. We wouldn't have hired you if you didn't have potential. But what we really care about now is performance there. So we really need to get people focused on, on execution. And so I really do hope that, next, that this time next year we have, and we also have set up a series of goals. So we have goals at the company level. We now have goals for 100% 100 of, of Yahoo employees have their goals, and they're, and they're posted as part of their profile online in the company directory. Right? We want to get people really focused on like, what is it they're trying to achieve? They're Why post, are they trying to achieve? Their goals are posted online in the company directory. So I can look up any employee's goals. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And what kind of goals mm -hmm. are they? Like what, mm -hmm. um, I mean. Um, you know, like, well, I mean, I, I don't want to announce what we're doing. But like, you know, for, for, for some of the product people, it's, you know, launch this feature on this date. Huh. And we try and make sure that the goals are very measurable. Um, and are your goals for finance, listed? My goals are the company goals. They're, they're, they're one to one correspondence. So, okay. my, so we, ha we announce the company goals, um, and, we, and you know, they are linked as both the company goals and as my goals. Okay. And if you're a salesperson, you know, we have goals as to how much we want to, what the targets are, how much we want to surpass them by, things like that. Are you. And they're stretch goals. We, make sure they're, we need to make sure that they're hard. Are there so. likely to be cuts? Um, I think that, you know, for example, we did, you know, in, in Korea, we made a decision to exit and we're closing that office. You know, the, the big thing here is, you know, Yahoo should be a growth company. We're in the consumer internet. You know, one of the, my observations is, like, if you look at the consumer internet, everything's growing. Like, people don't even realize it, but, like, online mail, still growing. Like, desktop search, still growing, right? You know, everything is growing in the consumer internet. We need to be growing, and to grow, you sometimes need to invest. It may mean that we, as we realign, we take some overinvestment from one area and invest it in another. So I do think it's going to be a very dynamic okay. uh, organization. But I do think that we are we we want to be a growth company, and that will ultimately mean investment. Marissa, what gave you the confidence that Yahoo can be turned around? Um, I think that. I, it's going to be a hard job. That was something that I, that I knew from the beginning. It's going to take multiple years. Um, but they have a great brand. We have a great brand. We have a great set of products. We have great people. And there's just a huge opportunity in terms of need. And you know, when I looked at it, you know, one, of, one of my friends uh, you know, had somewhere along the way um, you know, it was right after they had dismissed Carol. One of my friends came to me and said, like, raise your hand. <laughs> right? like, raise your hand is a tailor-made job for you. It's search. It's email. It's the home page. It's mobile. It's everything you've ever worked on. And, it, like, you know, and it, all it needs is great product design and execution. Um, and, you know, and at that time, it, it didn't feel like the right time. Um, but it did plant a seed, and it was a seed that made me more likely to take the call when I got it this summer. But, you know, th but, but there was an observation there. That the more I thought about it, I was like, actually, you know, they do have, they have all the right ingredients. Mm -hmm. It's all the right ingredients. You know, the company's been through a hugely turbulent period and a really distracting period. And, you know, and I think that it, on some levels, people had just had forgotten what, all the different things that Yahoo had going for it. And, all, and other people had, sort of, had gotten so distracted that they had forgotten that you know, it's really all about the users and it's all about the products. And so if we can bring that focus back, which I think we're already you know, making good progress and strides towards, you know, that's, that's half the battle. Someone told me that you were always fascinated by Disney's turnaround. 
Um, well, I was, I mean, I think like all kids, I just loved Disney. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I, I guess I was always, my, my parents would like subscribe to various business magazines. And so I, I still remember, it's funny, like I've never, I'm a huge skier and I've never gone hella skiing because the only time I ever heard, the first time I ever heard the word hella skiing was in connection to me reading a business magazine about Frank Wells. And so I'm still to this day terrified of hella skiing. Wow. Um, but I mean, I guess I was like, as a result, I was, you know, I watched the Sunday night world of Disney mm -hmm. and loved it. And I thought Michael Eisner had like the best job ever. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, and at the same time, I was also reading my parents' business magazines about Disney. So I guess I did, you know, I didn't really think of it, you know, in terms of, you know, what did it mean? You know, was it in a hill or a valley or, you know, what it was? I was just, I think, too young probably at the time to understand it. But I did think that there was, you know, an amazing business and an amazing company there. And I really felt like, you know, me, for me, you know, as the person experiencing it, getting to go to Disney World, getting to, you know, see the Sunday night, you know, program, it was something that was really amazing. So Sheryl Sandberg, who happens to be at a Disney board meeting, she's on the Disney board in, in, in New York right now and regrets that she couldn't be here. Um, she gave me a couple of questions, one of which was, <laughs> what is the most surprising thing to you about your life and career in the last few months? Uh, I think that, I, that there's two surprising things, um, and I can summarize it. I, I knew that the job would be hard, and I knew that the baby would be fun. <laughs> right? And I and I knew, and the thing that surprised me, and really pleasantly so, is that the job is really fun. <laughs> yeah, like Yahoo is a really <laughs> Yahoo is a really fun place. Yahoo is a really fun place to work, and you know, and I really I love the people there. I love the spirit of the place. Um, you know, there's an ir irreverence, and because they're in entertainment and sports, that's great. And the baby's been easy. The baby's been way easier than everyone made it out to be. And like, <laughs> and that is, and I you know, and that I think I've been really lucky that way. But you know, I had a very easy, healthy pregnancy. He's been easy, and so those have been the two really terrific surprises: that the kids have been easier, and the job has been fun. <laughs> what is the most? What's the most important thing that you do to get it all done? Hmm. You have to ruthlessly prioritize. Um, and I do, and that's one of the reasons I, I haven't been talking, and I'm going to go back to not talking uh, for a while after tonight, because I've been really internally focused. Um, you know, I'm from Wisconsin, and in Wisconsin, you know, there's, there's all kinds of different people, but the one thing that's true of all of us is we all follow the Green Bay Packers to different degrees. And, you know, it's the, the Green Bay Packers, the, the legacy and the lore there comes from their first coach, Vince Lombardi, who coached them to their early Super Bowl wins. And he's, he's actually quite a pundit. Like, he, it turns out these, like, kind of phrases you hear, like, quitters never win and winners never quit. That's a Lombardi quote. Right, you know, um, the only time the success comes before our work is in the dictionary. That's a Lombardi quote, right? Um, and, you know, Vince Lombardi says, you know, in my life there are three things. God, family, and the Green Bay Packers, in that order. <laughs> right? And, like, and, you know, and I think that, you know, for me, it's God, family, and Yahoo, in that order. So... That's a wonderful way to end, but I have one more question because. <laughs> <laughs> so last night in New York, we had a wonderful party for Carol Loomis, my colleague, who's been at Fortune since 1955, and Warren Buffett, who she just wrote a book about. And the book is out this week. And by the way, Warren and Carol are on The Daily Show with Jon Stewart tonight, if anyone wants to stay up late. And um, I asked Warren if he has a question for you. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, if you were not CEO of Yahoo, what company would you love to run? I hope it's not Berkshire Hathaway. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think that... You know, Yahoo's been really, it has been really tailor-made for me. It's a, great, it's a great role, and it's hard to imagine another role that would be a better fit for me. I mean, I, I think that, you know, I really admire entrepreneurs. I really admire founders. When I took the role, the board asked me, who did I need to talk to to make the decision? And my one ask was David Philo. Right, because I basically said, you know, I grew up in the culture of Google. I have a huge amount of respect for founders and what they do and entrepreneurs and what they do. And there's just no way I'm going to walk into this company on Tuesday morning, walk up to this guy and say, hi, I'm the person who's been brought here 
you know, and like, and I just, so I just said, like, I have to meet him ahead of time. And so because I have such a respect for founders and entrepreneurs, I probably would want to take a hand at that myself. So if I weren't at Yahoo, I'd probably want to try and build something myself, which, of course, is also really hard, but that's what I would try and do. Hmm. What do you think you'd build? Hmm. Well, I mean, I love, I love consumer internet. I love consumer mobile. So I would probably do something in that space. Mm -hmm. 